。経営学の父と呼ばれるピーター・ドラッカー。彼が言うイノベーションとは、より大きな価値や行動を生み出し、市場や社会に変化を与えることだと言います。それは、より良い製品、より多くの便利さ、より大きな欲求の満足を追求する活動だということです。同時にイノベーションとは社会的・経済的コンセプトを作り出すことでありそしてビジネスではマーケティングとイノベーションだけが大きな成果をもたらすと言っています現代のビジネスにおいてスティーブ・ジョブスほどマーケティングとイノベーションに長けた経営者はいないと多くの人が言いますそしてスティーブ・ジョブス亡き今ジョブスを超えるのがイーロン・マスクではないかという人もいます一方日本ではカリスマ性を持った個人の力よりも組織やグループが力を合わせることによって問題を解決し大きな成果をもたらす傾向にあるといえます今年3月にトヨタのバックアップでイスズと日野というトラックメーカーのライバル同士が提携し今後3社で協力していくと記者会見がありました脱炭素やケースの活用そしてドライバー不足やその他の多くの問題にこの3社で協力していくとしていますただいまより伊豆自動車株式会社および日野自動車株式会社、トヨタ自動車株式会社による共同記者会見を始めさせていただきます。トヨタでございます。私からはこの3社が手を組む意義についてお話をさせていただきます。これまでずっと日野の下社長とは、トヨタグループにおける連携強化について議論をしてまいりました私たちは今何が正解かわからない時代を生きておりますその中でまずやってみることそこから次が見えてきてまたやってみるその繰り返しでトヨタはここまで生き抜いてまいりました今回は輸送の現場に入り三者で力を合わせてまずやってみる今まさにそのスタートポイントに立ったと思っております対立ではなく協調を大切にするという日本の文化が今回の協力関係にも現れていると言えるかもしれません現在物流業界の現場は e コマース市場の拡大に伴う運輸サービスに対する高い需要そしてその反面ドライバー不足や同時に脱炭素化の動きなどさまざまな問題に直面しています日野自動車の下社長は物流業界のこれらの諸問題に対して3社で協力して立ち向かっていく決意を語っておられますここで少し輸送の現場についてお話をさせていただきます現在日本には6万社を超える物流事業者の方々がいらっしゃいます日々荷物を積み込み運びそして届ける大変な重労働の中でも輸送に関わる方々は一つ一つの大切な荷物を待っている人々に確実に届けるため必死に取り組んでいらっしゃいます私たち日野自動車は輸送というライフラインの中心で働かれるお客様と同じ目線に立ち多くの課題解決に取り組んでまいりましたしかし物流を取り巻く環境は厳しくこのままでは荷物が届かなくなる日が来るかもしれません課題の一つ目はドライバー不足ですドライバーのなり手がいないということですドライバーは交通事故のリスク長時間労働や運転以外の仕事の多さなどの環境面で非常にハードな仕事です長距離輸送におけるドライバーの仕事は運転以外の仕事の時間が運転時間と同じかそれ以上にあります例えば荷姿がバラバラのものを2時間かけて手積みし5時間走行到着地では荷受け時間まで1時間待機その後検品荷卸しにまた2時間という事例もあります市内配送においては e コマースの進展による多品種少量時間指定の宅配によりドライバーの負担は増え続けています課題の2つ目は輸送の効率です輸送において最優先されるのは納入時間と場所指定ですまた二両は季節や時間帯でも変わりますそのため効率的な輸送が行いにくく帰りは荷物がないということもあります積載効率は 50% を下回っているのが現状ですそして課題の3つ目はカーボンニュートラルです
日本の輸送における CO2 を低減することはカーボンニュートラル達成に向けても必要なことです仕事の道具であるトラックは電動化するだけでは不十分ですコストを抑えつつ輸送に使い勝手の良い電動車を広く普及することができなければ CO2 削減を達成できませんそして先ほどお話しした輸送効率の向上もカーボンニュートラル達成に向けて輸送における CO2 を削減するための非常に重要なファクターです以上のような課題は輸送に対する世の中の期待が高まった結果ですがそれに対する解決策を私たちが提示しきれていないことも事実ですこれらの輸送の課題を解決するには個者を超えて強調する領域が大変多いと思っております個者を超えたコネクテッドの連携により待ち時間を減らすことや積載効率を上げることが可能になりますまた今回の取り組みによりより多くの事業者の方々に電動車を使っていただけるようになりますそして何よりこれらの課題解決が進めば輸送の仕事に魅力を感じドライバーをはじめ物流の担い手が増えることも期待できます下社長はドライバー不足輸送の効率カーボンニュートラルの3つの解決すべき問題点を挙げましたドライバー不足の原因の一つは重労働で長時間拘束の割には給料が低いということも原因だと思われますそれは輸送効率コストの削減と密接に関係があると言えるでしょうどのようなビジネスでも経費が高くつけばその分人件費に回すお金が少なくなりますまた経営者側から見れば日本でもアメリカでも物流にかかる一番のコストは燃料代と人件費です今後世界的に見ても e コマース市場はさらに拡大していくと言われていますお客様目線で見るならばさらなる効率化によって低価格化とスピードアップを実現していく必要があるでしょうしかしコスト削減のしわ寄せが物流業者に押し付けられているとも言われていますどのようなビジネスでも利益を上げていかなければ競争には勝てませんテスラはコストに対して非常に敏感であり斬新かつ徹底的なイノベーションによってコストを下げてきました原材料から製造法そして設計はもちろんのこと販売方法に至るまであらゆる次元でイノベーションを起こしています下社長が挙げたこの3つの課題は少なくとも全ての先進国では共通する問題と言えるでしょうテスラは失敗を恐れてイノベーションを行わない人間はクビにするというぐらい会社全体でイノベーションを推し進める企業ですテスラならこれらの問題にどのように対応していくのでしょうかその一端を見てみます Let's show you what that means in, in acceleration. So, one thing we care about Tesla is we really care about performance. We want, it, we want a, a vehicle that feels incredible, that accelerates like nothing else.、Uh, let's show what the, the truck,、uh, what, what it's like to be in a Tesla truck. This is real time. Okay. So that's the, the, Tesla, the Tesla semi will go zero to 60 in five seconds.、Yeah. So that, that's by itself or with a trailer. Now, at 80,000 pounds max gross vehicle weight, that's the most amount of weight you can carry on a US highway. This is the real time acceleration of a Tesla semi. That,、uh, on the left, the thing that looks like it's not moving. Is a diesel truck. Now, what about up a hill? Okay, the, the best diesel trucks can only do 45 miles an hour up a 5% grade. Tesla Semi can do 65 miles an hour up a 5% grade.、Oh. That's 65 miles an hour continuous at max gross. 
what this means is that if, you've got a, if you're pulling a load over the Rockies or some mountainous terrain up a hill, you, you're earning per mile. You're earning 50% more per mile than you are in a diesel truck. That's a gigantic difference. So, uh, now, one of the biggest questions we've been asked about uh, electric trucks is, well, how far can they go? Because, well, let's find out. So, 500 mile range. Because this truck has no gears, it's, there's no, uh, you're not constantly shifting gears. It has one, one gear, so it's, it's, it's smooth. It's like, driving, it's like driving a Tesla. It's as though you're driving a Model S or Model X or Model 3. Um, it's just big. It's a, really, it's super easy to drive, and it feels incredibly responsive. It's unlike any truck that you've ever driven. Um, and, and the point of view that you have is also incredible. We, we put the driver in the center. So, the driver's actually in, in the center of the truck. You're positioned like you're in a race car. Um, you have complete visibility of the road and all the surroundings. It's a, it's a beautiful, spacious interior. You can stand up inside. It's got redundant screens. Uh, and it's, it, it, it just feels incredible to drive this. It's one of the best feelings it's, it's, so, it's incomparably better than, than, another, than any other truck on the road. You really have to drive it to understand just how good that feels. Like, I can drive this thing, and I have no idea how to drive a semi. <laughs> <laughs> what about you know, fueling today? If you're fueling a diesel truck, you've got fumes, spills, toxic environment, prices change all the time. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize is, is it actually t it takes up to 15 minutes or more to actually fill a, a, a truck. You have to sit there for 15 minutes while the, the tank gets filled. As compared to charging a, a, a Tesla truck, you can charge at your origin or destination. So while, while you're unloading your cargo, you can charge. So. And because of the Tesla mega chargers that will be installed in Worldwide, just like we've got superchargers installed worldwide, if you've seen the supercharger map, it started off with just a few, super, just a few chargers in California. Now we have uh, superchargers on, uh, throughout the world. And you'll be able to go anywhere uh, in, with a, a Tesla uh, consumer vehicle. The same will be true of the Tesla Semi. You'll be able to travel any, anywhere in the world on the Tesla mega charger network. And, uh, and, and that means we can guarantee the electricity rates because this, these will be solar powered mega chargers um, that uh, charge to a Tesla power pack. It's 24 7 guaranteed low electricity. And because these, these, these mega chargers are solar powered, your truck is running on sunlight. Okay. What about safety? Now, when I say safety, I'm talking about the, the driver's safety. I'm also talking about other cars on the road. I'm talking about pedestrians. Safety for everyone. Um, if you've got 80,000 pounds moving at 60 miles an hour, that's, it's a very dangerous thing. Every truck we sell will have enhanced autopilot as standard. Okay. that the truck will automatically break. <laughs> automatically break. Yeah, you can read it too. Um, auto it'll automatically break, but uh, it will actually automatically lane keep as well. So even if, even, if, uh, even if you're in the truck and you have a medical emergency, the truck will stay in lane and gradually come to a halt and put on the emergencies. If it doesn't hear a response from you, it will actually call emergency services and get an ambulance it's going to take care of you, it's going to take care of other cars, it's going to take care of pedestrians. This is a massive increase in safety. <laughs> then we have, in terms of connectivity to your truck, understanding what's going on, we have the Tesla app that gives you full information about your truck. This is a sort of normal, it's like we take it for granted uh, with, uh, if you've got a Model S or Model X or something like that, but this is not normal actually for trucks. You have full access to all your truck information. You've got remote diagnostics. You can 
uh, you can see uh, what's going on to preventative maintenance. The truck will actually anticipate when it needs to be ma when it needs maintenance and, and inform you ahead of time. Um, and uh, it, it connects with uh, the fleet. So if you've got if you're trying to manage a fleet of thousands of trucks, this is also incredibly important. All this data is coming in. You know exactly what's going on. Uh, it's going to uh, really help you manage the trucking. Now, having said all this, you're probably wondering how much is this going to cost? Because Tesla stuff is expensive. Um, <laughs> but we realize that trucking, the economics of trucking matter tremendously. If, if, you have a if your cost per mile is too high, it, it doesn't make economic sense. You can't make it work. So we really thought about this a lot. And when you take everything into account, take the lease cost, the insurance cost, maintenance, all of the factors, the, the fully accounted for true cost of trucking, a diesel truck will be 20% more expensive than a, than a Tesla Semi per mile. So. I want to be clear, this is from day one. So it, from day one, having a Tesla Semi will beat a diesel truck on economics, day one. And this is, at, this is a worst case scenario. So it gets better than this. This is, the, this, is the, this is the worst case scenario comparison. This is taking max vehicle gross. It's, it's going at 60 miles an hour. Um, and it's assuming $250 ga gasoline price. We're guaranteeing a seven cent kilowatt wholesale price. I want to be clear about that. So this is real, these are real numbers. And it only gets better than this. This is a worst case scenario. But what if you have a convoy? So what if you have two, uh, trucks, two trucks following? So you, you're, you're, you're more like a train, dri train driver. In fact, um, the, the convoy technology, the tracking technology, this is something that we are confident we can do today 10 times safer than a human driver. So this is, I want to be clear, this is something we can do now. Now if you look at the economics of a truck convoy, it gets way better. Now a diesel truck is twice as expensive as a Tesla Semi. This, so it's, what this means is it's, it's not just economic suicide to use one diesel truck, it's economic suicide for rail. This beats rail. All right. Thank you. Now, unlike Jojo, unlike Dojo, obviously that was not real. <laughs> uh, so Dojo is real. Uh, the Tesla bot will be real. Um, but uh, basically, if you think about what we're doing right now with the cars, uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are, like I said, semi-sentient robots on wheels. Um, and with uh, uh, the full self-driving computer, essentially the, the inference engine on the car, which we'll keep evolving, obviously, and uh, Dojo, uh, and all the uh, neural nets recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world, uh, it, it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. Um, and we're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year uh, that uh, is, basically looks like this. Um, and it's intended to um, uh, be friendly, of course, um, <laughs> and uh, navigate through a world uh, built for humans and uh, eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks. Um, we're setting it such that it is, um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> And, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. So it's, uh, it'll be a, you know, a light, a, a light yeah, anyway, five miles an hour. You can, if you can get run past than that, it'll be fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, around, around uh, five foot eight, um, uh, has sort of a, a screen where the head is for useful information, um, but it's otherwise basically got the 
uh, autopilot system in it, so it's uh, got cameras, got eight cameras, and um, yeah. Uh, full set driving computer, and making use of all of the same tools that we use in the car. So, um, I mean, things that I think that are really hard about uh, having a useful humanoid robot is can it navigate through the world without being expl explicitly trained? Uh, I mean, can, without explicit, like, line-by-line uh, -line instructions. Um, can, you, can you talk to it and say, you know, please uh, pick up that bolt uh, and uh, attach it to the car with that wrench, and it should be able to do that. Um, it should be able to, you know, please, you know, please go to the store and get me the following groceries, um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think we can do that. It's essentially, in the future, uh, physical work will be a choice. If you, if you want to do it, you can, but you won't need to do it. Tesla は EV とバッテリー、および AI のテクノロジーなどを駆使して、今後どのようなイノベーションの旋風を起こしていくのでしょうか。そしてトヨタ連合がどこまでイノベーションを推進していけるのか、どのようにして問題を解決していくのか、日本の発展のためにも今後に大きく期待したいところです。最後までご視聴いただきありがとうございました